Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2, War of the Chosen. This is Saiken and today we're continuing our legendary Iron Man exquisite timing run with a few permanent dark events. Uh, mashed in for good measure. We've been shot down, uh, which comes at no big surprise. If anyone has ever taken a flight with Bradford, you would know that he's attracting the aliens like no one else. And of course, the evasive maneuvers were not successful. So the only thing left to do at this point is uh, cock our guns and get ready to be overrun. Of course, we're trying to do our best that that is not going to happen. We need to kill this beacon here. And as soon as we uh, can destroy the disruptor, Everything will be fine. You guys know the drill. <clears throat> it's the classical um, mission where uh, you uh, where uh, you gotta defend the Avenger. Um, if I was to go here, let's place the snipers first. If I was to go here, I would be in grappling distance, which is great because it gives us high ground and Diva has death from above. So. Let's put the snipers in position first. There we go. One sniper over here. Quick feet takes the other uh, full cover slot over here. Perfect. Good. Frontline. Um, boom boom. The simple being is going to take uh, this position. Whilst our ranger Jessica Jones is taking this position. Also full cover. Magic Man takes full cover over here. And Hayward takes a full position, uh, full cover position over here. The most important aspect is that we're clearing out cover as uh, well as we can. Essentially trying to immediately uh, kill the enemies. And you can see a couple of new enemy types are approaching, this time the Purifier. Unfortunately everyone is having armor, it seems, at this point. Yep, that is pretty tough. Gotta deal with the Shield Bearer, to be honest, because that's going to hurt. We theoretically could go for a flashbang. Uh, that would um, give us an extra turn. Interestingly enough, um, although I thought we wouldn't get Wrath, Andy has joined us, which is not the worst. Ooh, and that is not a bad option, to be completely honest. All right. Any moves over. We're definitely placing him in shadows. In terms of just getting rid of the armor. This here is definitely a very viable option. Softening them up. This here is probably even a better option. The trap is set. Great. Good. We got a Mimic Beacon, a one that we probably shouldn't be using right away. But we can heal up Andy so that he will be fine. And afterwards we can start the explosion. Bit of uh, efficient um, management of our action economy here. So let's start with just clearing up the forest. That worked out pretty well, to be honest. Lots of damage. 
And we managed to get those guys down. All right. Next up, let's move up. Hayward takes uh, the point position here. Let's try to get the shield bearer. There we go. Shield bearer down. Still got run and gun, which could easily get us all the way up to here or here so that we could take shots. But before we do so, let's try to use the rest of our abilities. Alright, two of them are pacified. How far could we lob a grenade? That's not too bad. Hmm. I like this position here. I fear, on the other hand, that this might get us into trouble in terms of not being able to hit. Apparently we can hit. I was hoping that we could also hit a little bit of the tree, just to trim it down a tiny, a tiny amount. Apparently not the case. So that'll take care of at least some of the trees. Do we want to use teamwork already? Hmm. We could and kind of hand over the teamwork uh, to Hayward here. If we were to charge in, that'll be six to eight points of damage. Slashing definitely uh, could deal a lot of damage. Probably more than the actual um, shooting, which is, yep, only four to six. Tail and rounds are great, but unfortunately, the uh, mechanical units are pretty much highly resistant to uh, to any form of um, of crits, so you seldom be getting crits against them. Hayward has pretty damn good uh, chance uh, to hit. I think we should start with her. And that's a 100% kill. There's not going to be a second pack on this side, so we're fine. Enemy down. Overwatch. The reason why I know that there's no other pack is uh, usually uh, when you're getting swarmed, uh, the next pack is coming from the other side. It's like 99% of the time that is uh, the case. So I was fine. Uh, going in that aggressively. Of course, there can always be yet another reinforcement. There's, by the way, another pack back here. Now things are starting to get a bit more difficult, to say the least. Unfortunately, they are not close enough to the um, remote start. Out. 
Moving out all the way over here, we can throw our second um, our second claymore if we so desire. I wanted to check out the remote start once again. Didn't really work. There is a great remote start here, which I should consider getting next turn. This here would take care of our biggest problem. I want to make sure that the shield bearers are being uh, prioritized. My biggest concern with them is they are, they are essentially uh, quite difficult for us to deal with. Mainly um, because the three armor makes them highly um, unlikely to take any damage from ballistic weapons and they give everyone uh, four respectively five points of armor which makes it even worse. So lightning hands to explode that. Yes, there will be a codex clone. Time for us to take the high ground. Time for us to deal with the um, uh, Edmund shield bearer, like I said, primary target. And whilst we're at it, let's get rid of the codex. Good, so that's two for the price of one. Perfect. How do we deal with the rest? That's a great question. So we got to use one of our Mimic Beacons. We know there is another pack up here, which we very certainly do not want to hit. Could move up all the way to here and just take shotgun shots. Could move into full cover. Uh, moving up here is dangerous due to the other pack, which I don't want to trigger. So I'll probably run and gunning it and just take it from there. We have no one in range. Uh, we could use the Mimic Beacon here. I think that's reasonable. Which means, how about giving Jessica Rabbit here an aid protocol? That way she can take half cover without really feeling bad about it. And uh, Jessica Rabbit takes the run and gun option. We're taking the half cover just to minimize the distance. Okay, decent chances. I would of course prefer to kill uh, the Mac instead of uh, instead of just finishing. Uh, the Codex, no really good shots with our Sniper, which kind of brings me to the point that we're putting him to here for better shooting angles next round. The two uh, points uh, of his pistol should be enough to kill the Codex, which they were not. That's a big problem. Needing to put Boom Boom in a more exposed position than I actually feel comfortable uh, doing. 
but we got to deal with the codex in an efficient manner and the grenade here is the only really efficient way to do that plus shred uh, the uh, mech which i wanted to do good so that takes care of the mech's armor nice little critical hit that was damn good fine shooting All right. Hayward does not use her aid protocol yet. I want to keep it for next round. Uh, she has a poor position there. But the problem is every other position is even worse. I want to save the aid protocol for next turn because we're using our Mimic Beacon this turn, which means we can take a shot and to be action efficient or uh, reloading and then taking the shot, hopefully killing the mech. Okay, next, next pack is down. That's great. Let's use the Mimic Beacon as our humble offering for a sacrifice here you go two packs down and they are charging in there is yet another pack Mutant is definitely a problem. Sending reinforcements in from the Avengers reserves. Commander, the situation just got worse. Resistance outposts are reporting enemy transports on the move across this region. Good, we got another um, Ranger. Tracy St. Elliot is ready for service, and him and Boom Boom work together quite well. Good, so let's start today's uh, today's party by sprinting into a great flanking position, maybe over here into full cover, and essentially start taking this guy out. Run and gun. Uh, he's already an advanced uh, captain. Which sucks because he is taking way less damage. The mutant definitely should get the grenade. Who's your bond mate? Did I miss something? I thought... Boom Boom was his bond mate. Well, that stinks because my whole plan was uh, to move him in and then Boom Boom just hands over <coughs> an action, which is now which has now turned out to be a pretty bad plan. Moving up. Another nice remote start. I want to move in closer because this is the remote start I'm looking for. Yeah, we could deal with a purifier. Okay, highest priority first. Uh, this sergeant here needs to die. 
We got another Mimic Beacon, which we most certainly will use. Flashbang. It looks like a great option for next round. Let's see. So that's 100%. That's almost 100% good enough. There's the burning, which is helpful. Moving over into full cover. Let's continue harassing this guy. And of course he continues to dodge, which for us is really, really bad. This is quite the opposite of how we want it to work. The Advent Mech should be probably the next target, to be honest. Could move up to here. But I gotta deal with the Advent Mech, so we need Boom Boom in order to remove the armor. That's a dangerous prospect. You know what? We need to use the Sting here. In case we're missing. Luckily we're not. It's unfortunate. But we didn't have a chance to re-stealth. So... I really needed to be sure. Good. Boom boom. Uh, now begins to move up. If we are putting another... Mimic Beacon out, that should be fine. Or should we kind of go a tiny bit back? We don't really need him up front. Here I come. Not the most um, efficient uh, acid grenade that I've ever used, but it certainly gets its job done, which is removing the unit from the battlefield. A 90% shot missed, which was certainly not going according to plan. We know there's another pack here. So we've got to be really careful with what we're doing. And in order to not trigger too much, I would actually like to keep her here. We're using the time to reload. She has a good amount of agency um, uh, here, plus she has a uh, blade storm which can help us fortunately another miss good jessica takes a protocol and we're using our mimic beacon kind of here in the middle i want them to move closer to the mimic beacon there is the set of reinforcements. We find ourselves in a outnumbered situation. One that I hope we can end by just destroying the um, disruptor. Here. 
Our biggest problem is not only the number of enemies, but their amount of armor. As you can see, I often need to set up kills by first of all prepping them. And that's really pretty tedious and at the same time also, yeah, it co costs just a lot of actions. Okay, we gotta kill this guy, that's for sure. Oh wow. If they have the original command codes, they could initiate a full shutdown of the power core. If that happens, there's no way we're getting off the ground before they overrun us. Thanks for letting us know, Shen. The situation was bad before. Now it is absolutely terrible. Good. We can get back into cells, but only with the Claymore kill, which we cannot get. So, I'm continuing my journey, uh, kind of over here. This here is uh, due to the lack of actual alternatives and not so much due to it being the best single move that I could have come up with. Alright, so theoretically we could try to take that one out. We still can use a grenade, <clears throat> excuse me, to prep. First things first though, we gotta deal with the mutant. We gotta deal with the mutant. So a protocol for our front line, which is Wrath. There we go. Now, how do we get rid of his armor? That's the important question. Very good. So, Boom Boom moves back. And that's the easiest shot that we can take. Nice little hit, by the way. Good job. We're using teamwork to give him another chance. Boom Boom continues his reign of terror. Good, and I think, I don't know, it would be more effective using the shotgun against uh, the mech, so Magic Man takes out the mutant, which at least keeps us safe for this round. It's de definitely a na nail biter, my, my man, and uh, we might even end the campaign here if we fail to to succeed defending the Avenger. But I still got a couple of um, tricks up my sleeve. So it's not all over yet. It is over when the fat lady sings and not a single moment earlier. OK, 
Okay, next up, the stun lancer needs to die. Problem that I'm having is there is yet another pack over here. Uh, we could flank the stun lancer from over here. Not the worst idea ever, but we would pull that additional pack, which in return is the worst idea ever. Not sure if we would do that if we were to stand there. Lots of sectoids. That's a nice shot. Let's try to take it. Come on, we need to uh, hit him. Very nice. Okay, so what? We're looking at three hit points. We could kill him with a grenade. Yeah, we could certainly kill him just with a grenade. Good. What's the next target? Um, if we use the grenade for him, the next target... We gotta use our melee skills against those sectoids. It's too efficient to not do it. There we go. Melee vulnerability. Purifier will probably start charging in. Purifier will probably start charging in. I want to keep the flashbang still so that I can counter a mind control. Could move up to here and try killing the stun lancer without triggering a pack. I think that's a worthwhile investment. That flanks the stun lancer. And Hayward does exactly what she's supposed to. So now we do have freed up his action. Still got a banish. Which I would like to use with full a uh, full magazine next turn we could theoretically reload banish and almost finish the beacon we could of course also simply move over here and remote start that entire area which is probably even the more effective method to be entirely honest in terms of options Purifier, or do we want to take the mech? I think we're taking the mech. Let's take the mech and some of the cover behind the mech. By taking away the tree, I'm hoping that we get a decent angle on the disruptor. We did not get that one. But we can already prepare the mech. There's the last pack that I didn't want to trigger, but every round one additional pack triggers, so it's not like this is a huge surprise or anything. This will be a psionic bomb. Nope, that would actually be a hit. Mind spin. Panic is not good. 
Could have been worse with the panic. Could have been better. Could have hit. That's really bad. Ouch. Ouch. All right. Commander, I'm sending reinforcements in from the Avengers reserves. Well, thank you, Bradford. Uh, that is much appreciated. Let's start healing Magic Man. That way we have also cured Burning, so that he can start healing as well. We got some new grenades. Which I definitely would like to use in order to... Take out the mech and remove at least a bit of the cover. Okay, so first things first, we got to deal with the sector. It's The Viper, if we were to charge in, would probably just try to grab us. That's a risk I'm willing to take, but we are heavily outnumbered and we gotta take efficient kills. Fortunately, that was minimum damage. So that's the opposite of an efficient kill. I'll save the flashbang for now. I do have an idea how to deal with that. Alright, we're reloading and maybe I'll take a shot against the sector. Let's get all of the other things in order. Magic Man heals Boom Boom so that the burning stops. And we also got to heal Rabbit. No way around it. Oh wow, Boom Boom even has a med kit. That's great. Okay, we're moving over here. Finally. Without catching fire again. The advanced uh, stock will help us to kill the sector. That's a 100% kill. Good. I think it was this sector here who used the mind spin. So next order of business, kill him and kill the zombie on top of it. Very nice. Still got our flashbang. Jessica needs more hit points, so we're trading a vital action for making sure that she's not going to be in level damage range. And I would probably still keep my flashbang. No point in trying to hit him. There is a huge point in trying to hit the sector. Because the sector can start to burn. 
We're reloading. And we're starting to chip away. Well, that was actually a pretty damn good hit. Pistol crit for five. That's great. Viper decides to take a run for it, which is okay with me. That's another mind spin. Followed by a psionic feedback. There's the feedback. Jessica hunkers down, which was a pretty damn good idea. Psionic bomb. That will cause a uh, feedback as well. Three times, meaning she take uh, the codex takes 12 points of damage. Down to one HP. Double movement. And this guy even moves into uh, even moves into that area. Okay, well, one thing's for sure: we are getting pounded here. Moving up. There's a huge remote start, one that I'm definitely willing to take. This is kind of a winning move here. Kills the sectored. Almost killed the beacon. Fantastic. Good. So, moving on with the rest, how do we deal with all of these guys here? Boom boom, moves into cover. And we're probably just reloading. Quick feet. On Takes a nice movement over here. Uh, before we take a shot, let's wait a second. So if we were to go to here, damn it. Yep, that'll be in range of the Codex, which we definitely want to kill. Still got our ability to get back onto the roof if needed. Codex should be the main priority. Unfortunately, not working out as I was hoping it would work out. Here I come. Good, we got one healing, theoretically one healing left. Probably need to hunker down, I'm not sure if we're burning. No, we aren't burning, elsewise we couldn't use our extra skills, so it needs probably as a graphical bug. I don't like standing in the open, but it's probably the best thing that we can do at this point. Nice little critical hit with Blade Master. And let's hit both of these guys with a grenade. That'll kill the Viper and remove armor from the purifier
Can we accept that the Codex gets another turn? That's a great question. Continuing to harass the Purifier. It's probably not going to die. Not yet. Well, you should never say never, I suppose. Um, We're giving an aid protocol over here to Wrath. And there we go. Uh, that's both of these guys finally down. Mm. Probably would need to reload with Magic Man so that we do have the option to take shots next turn. And now the big question is how to deal with those three jokers here. I'm almost inclined to kill the Codex. The other two will use their Mind Spin abilities. And that's not the end of the world. We do have a flashbang. The Codex, however, can teleport and flank us. I don't want that to happen. Now, reinforcements are coming in. <coughs> wow. That is an intense mission. <coughs> Sector is trying to get to the target uh, zone. There's another mine spin. This time successful. Commander, I'm sending reinforcements in from the Avengers reserves. Menace one five, be advised we've picked up hostile reinforcements inbound on your position. Well, we got to deal with the Disruptor. But let's deal with the sectors here first. Taking care of the mind control. Jessica on her pursuit to kill all of the sectors. Ready to engage. Time to get the remaining sectors. And let's start with our snipers. Good, we're moving up. Just want to make sure that we do have line of sight. We also would have line of sight for the disruptor. Well, that is an interesting option. It would offer us the ability to just retreat gently. I like the idea of that. Moving into full cover. Not enough um, distance to throw. Yeah, I think we're going to take that shot. 
I'm just going to dictate that we're now uh, that we're now moving back. All right, time for us to bugger out. Okay, so in one turn we can theoretically move up, which is great. Reloading. Could move to here and next turn still just get out of there. Trying to figure out a way of minimizing the damage that we're going to take. Alright, first things first, let's try to shred that um, pesky advent mech. It's one down. This here will be the hopefully second shredding. There we go. Pretty damn good shooting so far. So that's the closest for us to also move out and be able to hit the mech. There we go, mech down. Running up. I know fair well that that's not going to remove the cover, <clears throat> but it can half it from time to time. Not this time. Nonetheless, three points of damage, which is good. Not a great chance to hit him. That's okay. Out of ammo here. Yeah, and let's try to banish to see if we can actually kill this guy. Answer is yes. And we're just going to extract everyone now. It was a much harder fight than I would have thought it would. And we've taken quite a few injuries, so I think the, uh, it's fair to say that everyone will be injured for a long, long time after this. Alright, back. And back. And back. And back. We already found out that Wrath can just about reach the zone. Sane does the same. Mike Public Bravo gets out of here as well. Only 
problem that I'm seeing is Jessica is having a hard time reaching the zone. Alright, run and gun it is. Running to here. And we can probably hunker down. Can't lift off yet. But what we could do is <clears throat> we could finally use our flashbang, which will prevent at least one of uh, the stun lances from charging in like a madman. Can also remote start the whole area here. Overwatch, she is indeed hunkering down, and we're giving an aid protocol to our sniper here, quick feed, so that he has also full cover. Yeah, the reinforcements are now quite overwhelming. So we gotta get out of here. Yep, that's going to hurt. Of course, everyone takes a good beating. Perfect, we can at least get out of here. Of course, the AI wanted to deal as much damage as humanly or AI possible. I think we could move over here and say thank you really quick before we extract everyone. There's the remote start. This will be big. Good. Zero soldiers out of range. So let's lift off the Avenger Whew, and get done with it. That is eight wounded soldiers. I am fully expecting that our med bay will be absolutely jammed after this. And here we are again. Well, it's as bad as I would have thought. 40 days for Jessica Jones. <laughs> That's just awful. That is just extremely bad. Well, a couple of promotions at least, got ourselves Hayward and Quickfeed promoted, that's great. And we got one Elarium Core. We got more promotions in the Armory. And if you take a look at it, like 40 days out of uh, service, Tank is 35 days out of service, everyone else is like a week to two weeks out of service, the rest is tired. We're definitely getting our um, rear end handed to us at the moment. <clears throat> this is a bit the problem. We've just um, not enough options to mitigate the amount of damage that we're taking. Did we get even more promotions? Oh yeah, here, Mike, uh, the Bravo Public uh, got a promotion. Sorry, Mike, how could I have forgotten about it? Lovely. So yeah, we got quite a few soldiers on lieutenant rank now. 
And one of the biggest problems that we're, um, oh yeah, and we got a negative trade. Well, to add, one of the biggest problems that we are running into is the, our inability to deal with the long um, recovery times. Could start building an infirmary. Question is, would that really matter at this point? It's 21 days to build. Um, I would need to figure out something to get more power. Or, on the other hand, would a training center not at least give us more benefit? Can we get something more out of the power relay here? No, we can't. We do have a resistance order in 14 days, but that'll, that'll be too late. So, unfortunately, I think we're stuck um, with what we do have. Yeah, it is what it is. We wanted to have the laboratory. And uh, one aspect about this achievement is you just got to cut all of the non-essential parts down. I could theoretically scan with the Templars um, and gain faster healing. But that's out of the option because we're almost at July 15th, which is the cutoff date um, for the exquisite timing. At least I think it was. Let me double check. So yeah, it is July 15th for War of the Chosen, um, which we will reach very soon. So... It's not much we can uh, can do about it. So let's take a pause here for just one second. Um, so now would be the time where we theoretically would need to do the last mission. So what went wrong? A bit of an analysis. Um, there was. A massively bad RNG involved, getting hunted down by the UFO, um, having long spawns away. Um, all of that contributed to us essentially not really being um, able to now, in this very moment, field soldiers. Biggest downfall probably was a lack of speed in making contact and researching at the same time, since building times are quadrupled and research time is doubled in most of the cases. Uh, I need to find a better way if I want to really hit the July 15th timeline to deal with uh, the abnormally high research times. Uh, so counter proposal here would be using the laboratory as um, discussed earlier and basically foregoing all of the other benefits from uh, proving grounds that we would get. Just build the school jack and then afterwards immediately uh, demolish it and um, get the laboratory done. That would sort of cope with the speed problem in researching because um, if we take a look at our research, we're almost done with the psionic gate. But after the psionic gate, um, the avatar autopsy still needs to be had. And I think before that, uh, to be fair, we first of all need to recover the suit as well. And the suit needs to be researched um, also. Both of them take 15 days. So, um, or 17 in this case. So we're about a month over just from a timing perspective. So it wouldn't be July 15th, but rather August 15th in terms of... Um, in terms of being able to to do the uh, to do the entire run, how do we cut off a month? Um, yes, we can with the laboratory probably shape off, say, twenty percent of the overall research time, which kind of accounts to ten days, maybe if we're uh, if we're lucky. I could optimize the build order a tiny bit more, and that'll maybe give us a few more days. And I could try to play the missions even more careful to not get injured, uh, which means we can uh, we can uh, deal better with it. But that still leaves around 15 to 20 days um, of um, of delta if everything uh, runs perfect in between where we would end and where we should end. And I think the only way to really um, 
circumvent that is to have the instantaneous um, uh, contact with the other regions. Because if you think about how much time we spend in making contact, making contact is always six to uh, six to eight days on legendary difficulty, so seven in on average. That's seven days here, 14 days, 21 days, um, 28 days, um, uh, 35 days, 42 days, 42 days um, of making contact. If you were, uh, if, if, if I had the option to simply get rid of that, um, it wouldn't fully shape uh, of 42 days because we still would need to do some research and sometimes you're not ready to, to go. Um, so it wouldn't immediately get rid of 42 days. But uh, let's say in between the black side, um, where we then uh, got uh, access to the Shadow Chamber and when we actually built the Shadow Chamber, which was um, kind of around the time when we had um, uh, started gaining access to Eastern uh, Europe. We didn't yet make contact. Um, like between that time when we built the Shadow Chamber, which was, if I'm not mistaken, beginning, um, uh, beginning of June. I might say beginning of June, maybe maybe late um, May, yeah, late May, beginning of June. Let's say it was late May, and I would have immediately gotten access to um, to the um, gateway section here. That would have saved almost a month of time, and then um, immediately making contact here. Of course, you still need to build the um, network towers uh, from time to time, so that won't happen instantaneously. But uh, the rest would happen in a in a matter of seconds. So that would have given us enough time to not um, fail the overall achievement. It is what it is now. Can't really change it. Um, but what we can do is, I promised you that I will try to finish the run as fast as possible uh, so that you guys have kind of a benchmark uh, to work against if you want to do it. Um, and in order to do that, the next um, uh, mission will be a guerrilla ops mission, either neutralizing a field commander for supplies or getting another scientist, which is probably a good idea just to speed everything up or getting intel, which we do not need. Unfortunately, the scientist uh, is, of course, the very difficult mission with 13 enemies. <sighs> and how does our team look at this very moment? So yeah, we got four soldiers and a few tired soldiers. That's going to be fun. And I think the only option... Oh, we don't even have enough supplies. Well, I probably will uh, recruit a rookie here so that we at least get a fifth soldier. One, two, three, four... Quick feet, we can just force him on this mission. Yeah, and then we're going to try our best um, to do the uh, to do the operation. What was the target again? I don't like the fact that it is very difficult. That is unnecessary. Heck, the workstation. Hmm. Yeah, well, probably not the best idea with two snipers. I'll come. I'll need to come up with a plan. Uh, again, we're kind of running out of resources a bit, and our roster is heavily, heavily injured. So it is what it is. Anyways, thank you for um, watching, and please leave your comment down below. Uh, share your thoughts about how the run uh, has been going so far and what could have been improved. I'm eager to read those. Thank you and see you soon. Bye-bye.